Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Aisha Rosalie. So today I'm going to react to another Zack and Nike video. This one is about a German doctor questioning Sharia law with Zaki and Nike. I'm super interested to see this. Uh, some people have told me this is one of the best videos, so let's watch it. My name is Burkhard Hofmann. I'm a medical doctor from Hamburg, Germany. I'm a psychotherapist and in your speech and when I read the Quran I see a big lack of what I would call the luxury of doubt. There's no doubts there whatsoever and I see a lot of my patients suffering from that lack of space called doubt. But they said that when you read the Quran he does not find the luxury of lack of doubt, but he finds in some of his patients there is doubt. What's the question, brother? Can you well, mention? In your speech, in what you presented, and as far as I've read the holy book of Quran, there's a lot of punishment, there's a lot of reward, but there's no space for yourself, for your doubts, for your personal vision. And I question and I think that forces people into a double stand of life. And I want to know your opinion about that. The brother has asked the question that when he reads the Quran, he finds a lot of punishment, a lot of reward, and no doubts. It forces you. Brother, would you like a book containing doubts or without doubt? The first verse of Surah Baqarah, the first few verses, Alif Lam Mim La Raibafi. Alif Lam Mim, this is a book in which there is no doubt. So why do you want a book of doubts? I would love a book without doubts rather than having a book of doubts. I'll come to your question. But we all have doubts. Sorry? We all have doubts. We have doubts of things which we don't know. But I've got no doubts on the Quran, Alhamdulillah. I've got doubts on things which I'm not sure about. Of course, I agree with you. But the thing which I showed, do you have doubt 2 plus 2 is 4? Do you have doubt 2 plus 2 is 4? No. Very good. That's a convention. Correct. That's As convention. sure, how cocksure are you that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4? I am more cocksure on the Quran. <laughs> coming to your question. Brother, coming to your question. And answer your question. And answer your question. It depends. Someone may not be sure. So if you go to a villager, he will not be sure 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So I cannot blame him. He hasn't studied maths. So similarly, because I've studied the Quran, therefore I'm cocksure, and that is what the Quran says. This is a book without doubt for those who have faith in Allah. Those who have faith in the unseen. And it continues. Coming to your question. The part of the question, that in the Quran, there is punishment and there is reward. And there is no space for doubt. This is how the human nature is. I am asking a question. When someone does good in the examination, what do you do? You reward him. You may give him a gold medal. You may give him a certificate of excellence, right or wrong? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. If he fails, you may ask him to repeat. Correct. That's a punishment. Whether you want to call it a reward or punishment, so this life, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life you are undergoing, brother, is a test for the hereafter. So as the human nature is, how we encourage our children, you do this, I will give you this reward. If you study very well, I will give you a bicycle. If you study well, I will give you a computer. Whatever it is. And sometimes he doesn't listen to you. He wants to jump. He wants to jump from a building. You say, don't jump. I want to jump. You must have him. A father is cool to be kind. I'll tell you, what kind of father are you? Where? Then you want to stop your child? You being a psychologist, you know psychology well. If he doesn't listen, you'll give him one slap. Why? Because you want to save his life. No, father, I want to jump. I'm a superman. You will say, superman is in the stories. So here, sometime you may slap him. A father is cool to be kind, so that he doesn't jump. So similarly, Almighty God has told the human being, this is a state thing that you should not rob. If you rob, there's a punishment of chopping off the hands. Now let's analyze this. See, most of the religions, brother, 
whether it be Christianity, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Judaism, whether it be Islam, tell us those good things. The difference between Islam and the other religion is, Islam besides telling you good things, shows you a way how to, how to achieve the state of goodness. All religions say you should not drop, Christianity says that, Judaism says that, Hinduism says that, Islam says the same. But Islam shows you a way how to achieve a state in which people will not drop. Islam has a system of zakat, that is every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of his savings every lunar year in charity. If every rich human being in the world gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world, there will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. After that, the Quran says, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, As to the thief, be it a man or a woman, chop off his or her hand as a punishment. <coughs> Non-Muslim will say, chopping off the hands. In this age of 21st century, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless law. I am asking you the question. If you implement, you know today, the maximum theft in the world is in which country? According to statistics, which country? Do you know? Maximum crime. USA. You go on the internet and Google, you'll find out. The country which we look upon, the most advanced country in the world, maximum theft and robbery. I am asking you the question, if you implement this law of the Islamic Sharia of the Quran, that every rich person who has a saving of more than 85 grams gold, should give 2.5% of his saving to the poor people. After that anyone robs, chopping off the hands, I am asking the question brother, will the rate of robbery and theft, will it increase in USA? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Answer honestly. We know that even the death sentence doesn't change anything. Whether I'm asked, will that sentence will come to it later on? I didn't talk about that sentence. And I like my hands. I'm asking you that if you implement this rule in USA, that every rich person who has a saving of more than 85 grams of gold, he should give 2.5% of his saving in charity to the poor. Yeah. After that, if anyone robs, chop off his or her hand. I'm asking you the question, will the rate of robbery increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Only decrease a little. Decrease a little? You say little, you say more, no, it will decrease. So why don't you apply that law? <laughs> Do you know today, the least rate of robbery and theft in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. And if you see the police of Saudi Arabia and USA, the USA police will take the Saudi police lock, stock and barrel. Not that Saudi police is very strong, but the law is so strict. A person will sit 10 times before robbing. They leave their gold shops, you know, only a string. In Makkah, one string. The shop is closed. You do that in New York. You do that in you, UK. You cannot. You wouldn't so, have a shop. You won't have a shop. Correct. My mother went to UK. UK when she was walking on the street, there is a person who comes and snatches the chain in broad daylight and walking and no one is doing anything. This is the western country. Will they be able to do that in Saudi Arabia? Never. Not that Saudi police is very intelligent. Not that Saudi police is very macho. You see the American police so involved. Guarded with all machine gun everything. <laughs> you see, with so much production, with so double latest weapons and latest motorcycles, latest cars, yet the maximum crime. You implement the Sharia of the God of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you get result. So what is? No doubt, no doubt it will stop, and it was done. This was done in one stage of Nigeria. In one state of Nigeria where they implemented this law, immediately the theft came down. I can give you many such examples, brother, many such examples. So here when you are getting, but it doesn't go down the throat. Why? Because it's coming from a Muslim book. The word Islam is allergy. The word Muslim is allergy. It is a practical law. You implement the Sharia, you get results. Now coming to a second example. Come to the second example. In Islam, the woman should wear the hijab, complete body covered, only, only thing that can be seen is the face and the hands up to the wrist. Some scholars say they should be also covered. Now if there are two twin sisters, who are equally beautiful, very beautiful, walking down the streets of Bahrain, Manama, one sister, she is wearing an Islamic hijab, complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist. The other twin sister, she is wearing western clothes, the miniskirts and shorts and a low neck. 
and both of them were walking down the streets of Manama and around the corner there is a hooligan waiting for a catch where will you tease a girl? I am asking a question, which girl will you tease? Will you tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab or will you tease the girl wearing the western clothes? Be honest brother. <laughs> you can't hide much under a short skirt. What I am asking you a question, which girl will you tease? Explanation later on. Be honest brother. Yeah, probably. Probably who? He will rob the western looking girl. Correct. That's the reason I'm banned in UK. That's the reason I'm banned in UK because I speak the truth. Now you, mashallah, whatever you are, you're much, you have better guts, better truth than the Home Secretary of UK. Which country you belong to? Greece. Greece, you said, no? Which country you belong to? Germany. Germany, mashallah, Germany. So Germans are much truthful than the Britishers. Now coming, after that the Islamic Sharia says, the Islamic Sharia says, if anyone rapes a woman, capital punishment. People say, capital punishment in this age of science and technology, Islam is a barbaric religion, it's a ruthless way of law. And I ask this question to thousands of non-Muslims and ask that to you also. That if, suppose, God forbid, someone rapes your mother, and if the rapist is born in front of you, and you are made the judge, what punishment will he give you? And 100% of those non-Muslims who I asked, all of them said we'll put him to death. Except there's one American who was very smart, while I was giving a talk in New York, and if I said, God forbid someone rapes your mother, and if you are made the judge, and if the rape is born in front, what will you give? I will give him five years imprisonment. So I told him, according to the statistics of America, America, the maximum rate of rape in any country in the world, it's in America. According to 1991, According to the status of FBI, every day 1,756 rapes were taking place. According to 1996, 2,713. According to 2006, 4,000. Every 20 seconds one rape is taking place. From the time I'm here, for three hours, already more than 100 and 150 rapes may have taken place. So this American told me, I will give him five years in prison. I said, according to status of America, those people that commit rape, after they're imprisoned, only 16% are reported. Out of that 10% undergo a trial, 1.6%. And out of that 50% get punishment, 0.8%. 125 rapes you commit, the chances you get punishment is only one. Very good bargain. 125 girls you rape, and one you get punishment. And after that, 50% are let free because they didn't rape the first time. The statistics tell us those people that undergo the punishment, when they come out, more than 95% again come in rape. I told him, if you want your mother to be raped again, you are most welcome. I wouldn't want that. Then he said, no, then I'll put him to death in the first time. I am asking you the question, that if suppose, God forbid, God forbid, someone rapes your mother, and if the rape is brought in front of you, and it's proven that he has committed rape. I'm asking you, what punishment will you give him? Close to lifetime. Close to life. Very good. So that is what the law says. I'm asking you the question, if you implement the Islamic Sharia in America, that all the girls should be properly covered. Any man looks at a woman should lower the gaze. After that, any man rapes, death penalty. I'm asking you the question, will the rate of rape in America, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Of course it would go down, but America won't be funny anymore. Correct! That's what America is afraid of. I agree with you, brother. The safest place, you go to Saudi Arabia, you go to the some of the Gulf countries, not all, some of the Gulf countries, very safe. You go to Saudi Arabia, you can be cocksure, whether your wife, whether your sister, whether your mother, even if she walks at night, no one will touch her also, and they dare not. So would you like to live in a country there? I have been to USA many times, giving lectures in big gatherings. Been to USA many times. Dangerous. To walk at night, the lady is very difficult. They do, some of them do. Those who don't mind. But it is not safe. Here, where the Islamic law is practiced, safe. So would you like to live in a country which is safe, you are free, no need, no worry to, to lock your shop, to leave your car, this is human rights. 
that's what the creator knows the psychology all your guns will not save you and people think that if you go to saudi arabia every second person your hands will be chopped off i've been to saudi arabia more than 50 to 100 times i've never come across a single man whose hands have been chopped off some people's hands may have been chopped off but the law is so strict a person thinks a million times before robbing same before raping you will think so this is a practical law i agree with you no doubt punishment reward no doubt you do good go to janna you do something wrong imagine this is human psychology now this law of the quran can even control the american there's no question anywhere in the world you implement the sharia therefore islam is the only religion for the 21st century hope that answers the question wow to be honest i never thought of it like that before i've honestly never thought of it like that i thought about zakat a lot and i thought that um, I saw one post before and it said that if Elon Musk turned Muslim and gave 2.5% of his wealth as zakat, that there would be no world hunger in the world anymore. He could completely eradicate the entire world hunger, which is absolutely crazy. I couldn't believe that. I don't know if it's true or not, but I couldn't believe it when I read that. But yeah, Zakir Knight is 100% right. If every single person in the world um, who has to give zakat gave zakat, there would be no world hunger. Like to me, that's proof in itself that Islam is a beautiful religion, that everyone's searching for the answer of world hunger, right? How do we save world hunger? Everyone's doing all these different things. How do we save world hunger? Be Muslim. That's literally how you say world hunger. Mashallah, I, I loved it when he spoke about that. And as well, when I went to Saudi Arabia for the first time, I was very nervous. I was so nervous, even though I'm Muslim. I still had um, a bad opinion on Saudi. I'd still seen a lot of things saying that, like, um, that women get attacked there. And even I, I heard Muslims telling me, like, be careful as being a woman there. Men are gonna, like, try and attack you. You might get kidnapped. I was told these things by Muslims as well. So before I went to Saudi, I was very scared. But Alhamdulillah, like, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I had zero problems like just walking the street was fine nobody bothered me yeah maybe some people looked here and there when they shouldn't have been looking that's their problem most of the time most guys lower their gaze um but that's it like i was speaking to my non-muslim friend the other day and she went to oman and she said the first time in her life that she's never felt uncomfortable walking the streets was in oman I'm a very peace-loving person. I wish nobody could get hurt and we could all live in harmony. That's just the person I am. But I also get what he's saying about how it is important to stop fe theft because if you... People stealing from other people is a huge problem and it happens a lot here in London and it's really awful. It gives you trust issues. And rape is obviously awful as well. And to completely eradicate rape, eradicate theft from society, that would be a huge thing. And I mean, honestly, Islam has the answers. Look in the Quran, you'll find the answers to anything you need, inshallah. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamu alaikum.